So without any further ado, I want to introduce um, Adriel Hampton, principal for the Adriel Hampton Group. He's a political strategist, he's a technologist, he's an entrepreneur, a community organizer. He was a congressional candidate in 2009, so he knows this stuff. He's also been a city investigator, a journalist for in, in San Francisco, and also a designer and an editor. So that's a lot of hats. Um, Adriel, welcome to the show. Please uh, introduce yourself and um, we'll go from there. Hi, Laura. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's good to be with the uh, Progressive California audience today. Always appreciate the work that Uphill Media is doing. Do you want me to say a lot more about myself? Well, you, you might <laughs> want to talk a little, just saying a little bit about um, about your time as being a con congressional candidate. That seemed to be a good primer for what you are doing now is what you learned then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it, I ran for Congress in a special election in 2009 in the California uh, East Bay, San Francisco East Bay. Uh, it was the old District 10. The current District 10 is in a very different spot. Um, it was, it was uh, before the um, 2012 redistricting based on the 2010 census. Um, the seat used to be held by Ellen Tauscher, who was a blue dog. Mm -hmm. um, I got really uh, radicalized personally um, by the Iraq war. I grew up in a conservative household. I had two brothers in the military when the Iraq war started. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just blown away that we would uh, go to war with a country that there was no real evidence that they were uh, had anything to do with 9-11. Right. Um, there was trumped up evidence uh, about 9-11. Uh, and then suddenly we're at war with two countries, and um, I realized that that uh, our government likes to uh, lie a lot. Yeah. Um, and at the time, I was a journalist. Uh, in 2000, um, I forget exactly what year, I went to a town hall um, with Grannies for Peace, uh, where we were going to basically give Ellen Tauscher a piece of our mind. Um, and... Uh, at the time, I think I was registered as a green and Tauscher was very, um, very uh, confrontational with the folks who were there to confront her about uh, her Iraq war vote. Mm -hmm. And she basically kind of yelled at us, uh, this is what the leadership told us to do. And wow. that's when I started uh, disliking Nancy Pelosi uh, with uh, uh, some vigor. And in 2009, uh, Tauscher re uh, retired uh, from Congress to go work in the State Department with Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton and uh, became an open seat. And I knew that there was a, a local um, state senator who was going to run who had previously been a Republican mm -hmm. um, and he was kind of the heir apparent. He was Tauscher's pick for the seat. Um, and so I actually declared uh, that I was going to run before anyone else. I ran as a Democrat. I've been a Democrat since or very, very far on the... Um, uh, democratic socialist side of right. the uh, of the Democratic Party, um, and uh, I really didn't, unfortunately, know what I was doing. Um, and and I think that's not uncommon for first time candidates, and it's not uncommon for first time candidates to take a shot at something like Congress, right? Um, because we see the need as so important, um, and because we see the representation as being so bad. Um, so I, um, you know, my family lost uh, our family home uh, during the foreclosure crisis, or that was the, the epigenesis of, mm -hmm. of, of losing our home. Mm -hmm. um, and it was interesting because when I uh, go and talk to people, I probably personally shook hands or passed flyers or spoke to about 10,000 voters in a five month special election. And when you would talk to folks, you know, they'd say, oh, are you crazy? Why are you running for Congress? Everybody hates Congress. You know, I'd say, like, if you have the power to do something about uh, a broken system, wouldn't, you know, it's, you should probably try. And that's that's kind of been the uniting um, uh, theme in all of the different uh, kinds of work I've done is trying mm -hmm. to, to repair broken systems. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2009, I uh, was very good at media. I was the first uh, congressional candidate to announce a campaign via Twitter and get press coverage for uh -huh. it. So uh -huh. de facto in the history books, I'm the first. <laughs> um, and uh, I got a lot of earned media through the whole campaign. I was uh -huh. very good at like, if the reporters didn't mention me, I'd get a whole bunch of people to you know write in the comments on the news story. Uh -huh. And then the next time they would mention me, at least in, you know, in, in a sentence. Um, but I didn't know how to do field. I knew you were supposed to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew you were supposed to talk to voters and identify voters. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had walk sheets and we were going door to door and I had a small team of some college interns and, and a, a, a paid staffer on field. And um, the problem was, is we were knocking on every door. So people would say, uh, 
they would say, oh my gosh, I've never met a political can you know, candidate before. And it's probably because they don't <laughs> vote regularly, right? So, well, so yeah. goes to their door. Um, but uh, from there, I, I went on to uh, work at Nation Builder, uh, which is one of the most mm -hmm. popular today, one of the most mm -hmm. popular uh, campaign software platforms for mm -hmm. politics. I was the third person at Nation Builder. Wow. Um, and I've really spent to the last eight and a half years learning uh, a lot more about how you actually win elections, right. you know, fundraising to field. Um, and the, I still know how to do the earned media piece. Well, good. Um, well, that yeah. is, so you have a plethora of tools and resources that you're going to share. And uh, obviously a lot of this has a big step up from back in 2009, 2010. So what have you learned from your experience that is now being addressed by these tools? And I think the first one was the, um, the uh, OSDI. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm very interested in how technology can be used to uh, reduce the cost of running elections and uh, really amplify uh, grassroots activist voices. Mm -hmm. um, and so OSDI uh, is a project. Uh, it's an all volunteer project. I'm on the board. There's some large technology companies involved, like uh, NGP Van is involved, uh, Catalyst, which is uh, you know, the big data provider for uh, Democrats and unions, um, but also a lot of smaller players and folks like myself who are kind of independent and are trying to use these tools to win elections. Um, and what OSDI is doing, it's it's uh, opensupporter.org. It's, it's called the Open Supporter Data Interface. And um, it's the idea that every uh, progressive technology vendor should have a common API standard. And that, that basically means that those applications should talk to each other um, that if somebody signs up on your website, that should go into your database. Mm -hmm. if, if you take a database action, that should update your field tools. Um, mm -hmm. And the open standard makes it much, uh, much more simple and much uh, uh, less expensive to do those kinds of integrations. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's about. And I, I basically urge folks to look at vendors that comply with Open Supporter uh, and to favor those vendors when they're making choices about who to use. And if you're using a campaign vendor that is not doing uh, open supporter, that you encourage them to do so. That's my uh, kind of activist pitch for for getting more of these technologies to actually. So how do you uh, find out uh, who uses this? Is yeah, there so there's um, there's a list. There should be a list on the website. Oh, oh and the, everybody, the links for everything we're going to talk about are in the description of the uh, of the video, including um, including this. So, and I'm going to talk about two of yeah, them that that yeah. are. Um, that are two of the larger and more useful ones. Mm -hmm. um, and then what you want is everything else to plug into right. the large and useful tools that you do pick. Right. Well, perfect. Um, there, now, there's, t tell us about Wellstone. That's a company that's coming up you know, three times in our, in our next slides with three different um, distinct tools and applications. Who are they and what um, have they created? And we're up to starting with the uh, movement tech uh, wiki. The wiki, yeah, yes. yeah. So I, um, I really appreciate the work that Wellstone does. So the, Wellstone is a nonprofit organization that was created um, in in the memory of Paul Wellstone, mm -hmm. um, and they're uh, one of the big things they do is train people uh, how to run campaigns, uh, all different aspects. Um, they they have uh, workshops and boot camps, um, and then they also. Um, uh, help with uh, putting on the annual uh, Roots Camp event, which is uh, uh, for kind of grassroots technologists uh, on the left um, and uh, just anyone in the grassroots. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot more and more of this is becoming, um, um, uh, you're synchronizing grassroots activity with technology because it allows you to do distributed organizing, just like, you know, Bernie had uh, a distributed organizing team that was kind of the largest, I think, that we've ever seen. And Obama did something like that in 2008, and it's just becoming more and more important, especially as, uh, you know, you have engagement broadcasting now. Mm -hmm. You have right. um, uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and um, uh, so many more avenues mm -hmm. to communicate with folks and right. recruit volunteers. And then you have uh, kind of hardcore technologies also. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that Wellstone does um, the, the wiki is very important, um, not because it's it's all complete right now, but because mm -hmm. you can go there and you can add uh, and write about technologies that you're finding useful for progressives. Right. So it's something I'd really urge people um, to awesome. uh, to go and edit uh, and add to. I love a good a couple wiki. Of things. Yeah, yeah, good good wikis are really important. Yeah. And Wellstone, uh, as we'll talk about in a moment, has so many critically important tools. Um, right 
that uh, that they have on their own site, that I think that wiki is a good place to, to aggregate things. Just right. like OSDI is a place to aggregate people for the things for the standard, the Wellstone right. uh, Tools Wiki, you can um, update, you know, how are you uh, reaching people in the field? What social right. media tools are you finding particularly helpful and what are the strategies you're using? Yeah. So you mentioned uh, earlier that they have other tools. One we we were playing with today, which is really cool, is the win number calculator. And do you have that so that you can yeah, share? Yeah, yeah. Let that? me uh, just move to screen sharing here for a second, and I will um, I will uh, run us through how that actually works. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see, is, is that uh, coming up? All right, here we it go. It is. So, so um, the Wellstone. Uh, this is called the uh, win number calculator. And the win number calculator is super useful um, because uh, it, it helps you start to see uh, the real numbers you need to win. Because um, you might, if you're in a congressional race, there might be 400,000 voters. Um, uh, and then you think, okay, with turnout, you know, there's, there's gonna be lower, but you're, this tool actually gives you a calculator. So this version has two candidates in the race. There's another version that has a lot more candidates. It's more difficult, so we'll start with this one. It asks you to find the percentage of voter turnout from the last three similar elections. So if you're running for city council, that would be a, a, a city council election. Um, try to find almost the exact same thing. So if it's a district race and you're running a district two, you want to find, you know, how did district two turn out in the last three elections? So if it's uh, if you're running in 2018 and, and you're on a four year cycle, you might be going back to 2014, 2010 and 2006 to find these numbers. Um, so let's plug some in here. Um, usually voter turnout is a lot less than uh, than 50%. So let's mm -hmm. do just uh, play around with these and say that these are the numbers. Um, for okay, this where election. do we get these numbers? Where, where, where are they? Yeah, at? yeah, good, great that question, would, that would Laura. Stop me right away, if I well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, don't just make them up like I just. <laughs> uh, typically, you'll get them from your uh, county registrar and sometimes your state registrar of voters. So. Um, if you're running for Congress and you have, when I ran for Congress, I had four districts. So I had mm -hmm. to organize voters in, excuse me, I'm sorry, one district, four counties. Mm -hmm. So I had to organize voters in four counties, which means usually voter files are maintained either at a state level or at a county level. Mm -hmm. So I had to get voter data from four different counties. And I also um, had to uh, uh, get uh, turnout analysis uh, I did from the state level. Mm -hmm. So from the state level, you're going to be able to get this information. And if you're running for city council, it'll usually be your county registrar. Yeah. Well, click. Um, I'm dying to see what happens next. Okay. So um, let me, sorry, let's get this up here a little bit. Next. Okay. Um, and then you have to know how many people are registered. Again, this is something you'll get normally from the county or the state level. Mm -hmm. A multi-county race, it'll probably be the state. Uh, and uh, a city or county race, it's the county. Um, so let's just say there's uh, yeah, 98,329 people registered for this particular race. So then it just takes those, it crunches those turnout numbers and the current voter registration and tells me how many votes uh, I need to win. And this is kind of cool, right? Because I have 98,000 yeah. voters in a two person race. I know I only need you know, 15,852 wow. to win. Um, but you don't stop there because you need to find your vote deficit. Um, and the vote deficit calculator, uh, I, I forgot the final digits of that, but it's like 15, eight, five, two. Okay, and then we're gonna go, and then it says, uh, go back and find the three smallest percentages of the vote that candidates or issues like yours received. Um, so this is, this one's a little harder. There's a little more art to it. Uh, if you're running as a third party candidate or as a uh, independent, uh, or you're running as a progressive Democrat against uh, an incumbent here in California, um, it's uh, top two in a lot of the uh, races in the mm -hmm. state and uh, and federal um, primaries. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're running for Congress, it's going to be the top two candidates. Right. Um, so you 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 want to be uh, fairly conservative here. And so let's say in the first election, the candidate. Uh, like mine got 12, uh, and the second they only got nine. Um, but more recently, progressives have been trending, so they got 15 um, in that race. Uh, that's the number of votes that I need. Um, and we'll we'll stop here, uh, and uh, I'll talk about the, uh, the now what. And mm -hmm. Wellstone's tools actually have uh, quite a bit uh, of now what. Um, and really, all of those are oriented towards um, 
what do you have to do to get those voters who are not uh, going to automatically turn out for you? Because you could say that, like, if you're the Green Party candidate, um, let's just figure that of all the Greens who voted the last time, probably 90 percent are going to vote for you if there's not another Green. Mm -hmm. um, but what if you still need that 14,000, 15,000 votes uh, to win? And that's where you start calculating. And again, Wellstone has tools for this. They don't have a handy dandy calculator, but they have a really nice worksheet. Mm -hmm. uh, you start calculating how many uh, hours you need um, of volunteers and what kind of activities you can put them into. So that could that be- the, That's the voter contact formulas, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a slide for that one that we can we see? Do. All right. So the, the voter contact formulas, there's all, diff all kinds of different ways you can contact voters, obviously. Um, and what you're really trying to do is ID voters who will support your candidate. Mm -hmm. um, you're not just trying to put a Facebook ad in front of them or a piece of mail in their mailbox because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you can spend a lot of money on either of those, especially you can spend a lot of money on mail uh, or a cable TV ad. Um, but it's very hard to know if those voters are, are then going to turn out. Um, I won't say that those are useless ways to spend money, but most uh, corporate free campaigns uh, have uh, small grassroots budgets that are really fueled by people who can give a hundred dollars or less. And maybe, you know, you'll maybe get 20 donations that are over a hundred dollars, uh, mm -hmm. in, in some of these races, particularly mm -hmm. a smaller one. And, um, for example, you can, uh, call voters, uh, and if you call them from your cell phone, it's very, very slow. If you call mm -hmm. them from a, uh, what's known as a dialer, it can be much, uh, more efficient. Um, there's even something called the predictive dialer that's mm -hmm. that's really based on uh, what people used to do with um, or still do with telemarketing. Mm -hmm. It's like a mm -hmm. telemarketing style where, right. you know, you wait two seconds and it says, hi, this is Adriel calling on behalf of Bernie Sanders. <laughs> right. Um, but those can be insanely efficient. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have tools now for uh, text banking. Uh, mm -hmm. You can shoot text to voters. I like um, that. I've been getting texts from different campaigns and I appreciate that much more than a, than a call from a number I don't know. Yeah, I think that um, that I mean, some people don't like the text at all because at the end of the day, you're usually doing them to non opt-ins unless mm -hmm. you have the the a Bernie style campaign where you can really get tens of thousands of people to opt in, and right, then you're kind right. of phone treeing those. Um, the other method that Wellstone talks a lot about is uh, is door knocking. Mm -hmm. It matters also whether or not you are trying to do persuasion, um, and that would be where someone uh, doesn't know who your candidate is or they're not right. convinced they'll vote for them. If you have a popular candidate or they're endorsed by a really popular person, for example, if you're endorsed by Bernie Sanders or Our Revolution, you find the precincts that have a uh, very high turnout for Bernie Sanders in uh, the 2016 primary. Mm -hmm. And when you're calling into those and you mention that endorsement, you're much more likely to get a yes and not have to persuade someone to vote. Right. So the ID calls are very fast. Persuasion calls can take a few minutes because you're walking someone through a tree of why they should support your candidate. Right, right. 